I, I have nothing funny to say at all. I can't think of anything funny to say. What I'm about to say cannot leave this room. Do you know who Vicente Cortez is? Yes, he is the top lieutenant in the cartel. He is known as the Bank of Bogota, the Tender Tender, the Lender Lender, the Money Launderer, El Chapo, the Pork Chop, <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Tomorrow morning, you will escort our witness to Dallas so she can testify against Cortez. Mrs. Reba, we have got to get going. Look at you, you're teeny tiny. You're like a little dog that I can put in my purse. But Cortez has killed every witness we've had. You're in danger, ma'am. Everything's gonna be fine. What about my husband? <laughs> Oh, hey, oh. Penis. Oh, my God. Uh, Penis. I'm going to get... Officer Cooper is four feet, nine inches. I am five foot two. Traveling with a 15-year-old suspect. Fifteen. Find him now. We have to get out of this car right now. They're going to kill us both. Follow my lead. Mrs. Reba is having some problems with some lady business. Can't you just hold it? No, you see, once a month, my uterus shans its lining it so months. that the, the eggs and the descend egg. into oh, the pool. Oh, my God. Uh, I mean, to be fair, it hasn't been fun talking about bad movies on this show since Mac and me, so uh, who, who cares at this point? Straight Arrow Policewoman Cooper is excited and thrilled about her next assignment. Her task is to escort Daniela Riva, a wisecracking Colombian beauty, from San Antonio to Dallas so both she and her husband can testify against a drug lord. Plans go awry when Mr. Riva gets ambushed, leaving Daniela a widow. Cooper and her witness must now use their wits to escape from crooked cops and murderous gunmen while not trying to kill each other in the process. This one has 5.1 out of 10 on IMDb, still 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, it has 3.8 out of 5 on Voodoo. So that's a little bit higher than Supergirl, but, but not by much. This is a comedy film that came out in 2015, and uh, in a lot of ways it reminded me of another comedy from 2015 I reviewed before, and that movie in question was Get Hard, which was a buddy comedy between Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. And this is a buddy comedy with Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara. In a lot of ways, it feels like Get Hard, but for women. Other than the year that they came out and the fact that they're both action buddy comedies, the biggest similarity between the two is they're not that memorable. You also got little traces of that movie from 2012, The Dilemma. I did a video on that one too. Um, because just like with that movie, for the first half of it, I was just wondering, who decided to torture these poor actors by putting them in this crap movie? And then I found out that, oh, Vince Vaughn not only starred in that movie, but he produced it. Same deal here. I was wondering, who is the evil bastard who decided to torture these poor actors? And then I saw halfway through the movie, on IMDb, it said, oh, Reese Witherspoon produced it. So, there you go. Reese Witherspoon is the one to blame for this. What's the movie about? Well, Reese Witherspoon is a cop and her father was a cop, and apparently he was just the coolest cop dad in the world because he always let her ride in the back of his squad car ever since she was just a baby in a booster seat. And then over the years, uh, he would drive her and her friends around in the cop car, and he would do arrests and just let his daughter sit in the back seat with these criminals. He's a cop, and she just loved her dad so much that she wanted to become a cop. She is not as good a cop as her father. She screwed up so badly that now, amongst the office, whenever somebody screws something up, they call it pulling a Cooper, because that's her name. Uh, and that thing that resulted in her having to stay behind a computer desk typing away on a keyboard and going through inventory in the evidence locker and stuff like that, it's because she once tasered an innocent person on the street just because they said that they were going to be riding shotgun. Hey, I got shotgun! Got Drop your weapon! Oh, 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 and this is just the beginning of characters being so dumb that there's no way they would actually function in real society. But her police chief goes to her and, and pairs her up with some uh, higher up in their, in their police squad and says that they need to be escorting somebody who is going to be testifying against some kind of uh, uh, local crime lord. 
they need to get this person to testify and they're going to move him and his wife into witness protection. And this is where Sofia Vergara comes in. She's the wife of the guy who's going to be testifying and uh, they establish right off the bat that they don't really have a good relationship. They're always yelling at each other. Uh, this guy seems like he's just kind of a, a rich asshole who's not really willing to play ball, but he'd rather be put into witness protection instead of going to jail for the rest of his life. And she's incredibly... Um, materialistic. She's constantly clinging to dresses and hats and shoes. Uh, and even when Reese Witherspoon tells her to, you know, probably focus less on her things, she talks about wanting to bring a tiara with her because she just needs it. But in that very moment, two rivaling gangs show up, one wearing ski masks and the other just looking like a bunch of cholos, I guess. Uh, but they open fire, they shoot the other cop guy, and they also shoot the husband, so now it's down to Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara. They get into one of the guy's many extravagant cars, and they take out of there, and here's where we begin the many contrived comedic series of unfortunate events that happen all throughout this movie because the characters are too dumb. Sofia Vergara lost her phone, or she accidentally left her phone back at the house, and Reese Witherspoon's walkie-talkie got disconnected, so... She tells Sofia Vergara to call 911 while she's driving, but she takes a sharp turn, and Sofia Vergara, I guess, has butterfingers because the phone slips out of her hands, and then it lands on the road, gets hit by a car. Now 1139, then 911, then 2, 10, 12, no, scratch that! 1, 10, 12, and 2, 10, 16. Get a move on! Come on! <gasps> Something bad happened to the phone. So in that very moment, they then have to stop at a gas station so that they can use the payphone to call for backup. Chris Witherspoon was able to identify one defining characteristic of at least two of the gang members that showed up, and that they have uh, these tattoos on their wrists. And it takes her five minutes to decipher that it's supposed to be a bull skull. It seems to be a Buddha sitting on a wave, or a bottle of barbecue sauce guarded by two snakes or a snowman uh, melting in the rain, possibly a peanut in a puddle. It's a cow. I am talking on the phone. It's a longhorn. They consider it making the state animal, but they went for the Amarillo instead. Hey, like I said, the characters in this movie are so dumb, they make Beavis and Butthead look like members of Mensa. Anyway, after she makes the call, two detectives show up and they say that they're going to help them, but then she notices that these guys have the same tattoo that she described earlier, so these guys are the same gang members from earlier that had the ski masks on. So then they have to try and think of a way to get away from these guys. This is a problem I notice with a lot of modern comedies, and I've talked about this plenty of times before, but I really hate this trend of, hey, we don't really feel confident with writing a comedy movie, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get people who are comedians or comedic actors, we're going to get them to just kind of ad lib and then we'll just figure it out later in the editing room because we're not confident with our own writing. And I hate stuff like that. And granted, this isn't the worst example of that, but there are plenty of times where it's like, oh, well, these guys are funny. Just let them ad lib and just improv off of each other. You know, it worked in movies like Anchorman, so let's just let them do it. And there's this whole five minute thing of them talking to the guys about how they need to get out of the car and... Uh, Mrs. Reva is having some problems with some lady business. Of the tampon variety. You see, once a month, my uterus shans its lining it so that the, the eggs and the descend egg. into oh the boots. Oh my god. The boots, mm -hmm. No, they're down. fluids. Oh, and there's other oh, fluids oh, and they go in there. What is she talking about? There are several scenes like that in this movie where it just feels like bad ad lib and they're just kind of bantering off of each other and they had nothing to work with. Here's the other thing about this movie, and this is why I compared it to Get Hard. In Get Hard, you had really awkward chemistry between Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart, who both have distinct styles of comedy, but neither of them really connected, and they didn't really feel like a comedic duo. You get Kevin Hart to be in a movie so he can be the short, sassy black guy who talks in slang a lot, and you get Will Ferrell to be in a movie so that he can be awkward or socially inept and flail around a bunch and yell a lot and uh, potentially get naked or at least down to his underwear. It's the same deal here. These guys are basically playing archetypes. I mean, Sofia Vergara is basically playing the same character that she's been in every single movie or show. And granted, sometimes that's funny. I do like Sofia Vergara. I really liked her in Modern Family. And she's basically playing a slightly more ramped up, kind of bitchier version of that. But 
like it gets old really fast and i mean reese witherspoon is basically doing kevin hart shtick you know how in movies they'll make fun of kevin hart for being short when they first get away from these detective dicks they go to the bathroom and they're discussing their strategy of how to get away from them and they're like oh well let's get out this window and then we'll like we'll sneak out when they're not looking and oh because reese witherspoon is so short even with a running start she still can't get up to the window she needs sofia vergara and some guy they they found in a bathroom stall to hoist her up add to that these guys have no chemistry whatsoever I've reviewed plenty of bad action rom-coms where a lot of the time the main characters are just yelling and complaining and bitching to each other, and it's the same deal here, to the point where it's like, these are our main characters, I'm sorry, but they have no chemistry and they're not that likable. Sofia Vergara is basically just uh, snotty, entitled, you know, oh, basically had a bunch of rich, expensive things given to her throughout her life. Granted, they do give her some depth that they establish where I guess her only real family was her brother who was killed by uh, that crime boss at the beginning of the movie and then, you know, that plays into the third act of the film. There are gifts from my brother in Colombia. These are the only things that I have left from him. He got in trouble with the wrong people. He went to the police for help. And he ended up dead. But... A lot of the times, any kind of plot or character development in this movie is just thrown away with simple one-off lines where it's like, oh, okay, that's why they're doing it. Another thing that was bugging me all throughout the movie is who had a more annoying voice? Like, okay, I know some people rant about Sevilla Vergara having an annoying voice, and I get it, because believe me, if you don't like her voice, you're gonna hate this movie. There are plenty of times where she just over-enunciates certain words and it gets really obnoxious. But part of me is at least forgiving of it. Like, okay, I've heard her in interviews. She actually does talk like that. She's talked about once trying to go to a, a speech coach to try and help lose the accent, but it just didn't work. So I can be a little forgiving of that. What I can't forgive is <laughs> Reese Witherspoon trying to do a Southern accent because her character's from Texas. Every time she said lines, in my head I was just thinking, did they originally want uh, Reba McIntyre for this? Because it sounds like she was trying to sound like Reba, but... It just didn't. That brings me to another thing, another running gag in this movie. They have sometimes Sofia Vergara, sometimes other characters, but whatever. Most of the time they keep having these jokes at Reese Witherspoon's expense, saying that she's not attractive or that she's ugly or that she looks like a little boy or something like that. She's so unattractive and she has a mustache and talks like some tiny little robot. And the entire time I'm like, She's still Reese Witherspoon. Just because you don't put lipstick and eyeliner on her, or you put her hair up in a ponytail, she's still Reese Witherspoon. She's still attractive. Not personality-wise, her character is so OCD and neurotic to the point where she's like just not fun to be around. I have a tendency to be hyper-focused, so it's difficult to relate to people when there's a task at hand. Exactly. That right there is your problem. 10, 5, 20, I am Lauren. Please not 10, 45, I'm right and you're wrong. It relaxes me to do my numbers. Obviously it doesn't work and that's why you don't have a ring on your finger. But it's like, even on the poster, they have like her hair flowing in the wind and she has lipstick on in the poster. So it's like, okay movie, I don't buy that shit for a second. You did the same shit with Jennifer Aniston and just go with it. Just because you put her in glasses and put her hair up in a bun, that doesn't hide the fact she's still Jennifer Aniston, okay? She still looks good. You can't bullshit me, movie. Anyway, our two heroines get away from the two detective dicks and they're officially on the hunt for them and the main two leads are just going from scene to scene and getting into shenanigans. Right after they get away from the detective dicks and it's revealed that Sofia Vergara smuggled cocaine with her. This is almost never brought up except I think once in a passing line of dialogue. Um, but like a bunch of coke blows out and because uh, you know, their car was hit accidentally by some guy driving a truck. Um, and like Reese Witherspoon temporarily gets like a cocaine high and she's like all jittery and she can't stop moving. She can't stop talking. 
And at one point she says like, oh, I'm the mother effing police. I should call the police. No, I am the mother effing police, don't you see? That shows how weak sauce this movie is. If you're gonna do an action comedy, at least try to make it rated R. I mean, shit, even the bounty hunter, as awful as that was, that was at least rated R. This just feels like the most common denominator Eh, well, you know, the studio board didn't want it to be rated R because then, you know, no one would see it, so we had to make it PG-13. So, so the two stop at a convenience store to try and get a change of clothes so that way they're not recognized, even though their faces are all over TV and the local news and on the local radio, they're talking about them. Officer Cooper, who stands at 4 feet 11 inches. Oh, come on. The other suspect, a 45-year-old Latina woman, is also on the did it like three times and it was never funny any time they did it. Uh, they stow away in the back of some like animal haul uh, truck that's being pulled and then they get out and they're held at gunpoint because the guy driving the truck found two mysterious women just kind of loitering on his, his front yard and oh, <laughs> the guy holding the shotgun at them is played by Jim Gaffigan and they give him nothing funny to do. He holds them at gunpoint, they have this really bad lesbian shtick where they pretend to be lesbians to try and trick him. Kiss me, kiss me, man. Love this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to report oh God, two suspicious women on my property. It's not working! Sexy! Okay. Oh, sexy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Pull my hair. I like that. Yeah. 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 I love it. Pull my hair. Yeah. Like Yay! Who, who would be turned on by the way these two are, like, acting like cartoon characters? I don't get it. But, uh, you know, oh, he has the shotgun, he starts getting turned on by this, and then he shoots one of his fingers off. Uh, and then Reese Witherspoon starts to freak out, thinking that his dog ate the finger, but then it turns out Sofia Vergara grabbed the finger, and then she passes out because it's making her squeamish. And then he just kind of runs off, and that's the end of the scene. Okay. Uh, they take off, they go to a neighboring house, they find a truck that has the keys in it, so they take that truck to try and uh, get away as fast as they can, and it turns out that there's actually a person in the back of this truck, and the person in the back is actually the guy who owns it, and he has, like, one of those anklet devices you have when you're under house arrest, and they reveal why later, but at first they think he's a criminal, but then they, they figure out that he, he's actually on their side, he's good, he can help them. So he drives them for a little bit, and then we get... The, the obligatory scene where, oh no, road blockage ahead. They're having, uh, you know, police and detectives, you know, shut down the road so that way they can try and see if our main characters are on the run. They gotta hide. They gotta do something. This results in the most old school joke you've seen in any movie ever because what happens is they find this old deer costume in the back of the truck. So they get out of the back of the truck and then they run through the grass with this stupid looking deer costume and even though it's very blatant that you can see two women's heads peeking out from under it, there are these just cops on the side of the road that are, even though they're looking at these women square in the eyes, they're just like, all right, well, I guess that's a deer. Let's just keep walking. It smells in here. It does not smell. It is not a real deer. It's a decoy. Okay, this probably wasn't my best idea. We need to make some deer noises. What is a deer noise? Are you kidding me? That's not a horse. It is from the horse family. Just make the noise. Yeah, you gotta hear something over here. <gasps> Keep doing the sound. <laughs> I swear to God, man, that's vaudeville stuff. That's stuff that you would see in Three Stooges in the 30s and 40s, man. And this movie came out in 2015. I remember another bad comedy used that bit. It was, I've seen it in a bunch of movies, but... Um, I didn't do a full video on this, but I talked about it once in one of my movie marathon videos. Uh, have you heard about the Morgans? Something like that. But there was a scene in that movie where those two had to get into a two-person bull costume on Rodeo Day to try and get away from uh, a hitman. The only time I think I've ever seen the two-person bull costume bit saved in any movie ever was Top Secret. <laughs> so, it is you who is a traitor. <laughs> Don't take it too badly, old boy. You're no more of a fool than the others. Now get over there and pull that- oh! Anyway, after that hilarious set piece, they stop at a hotel. Uh, Reese Witherspoon finally starts to let her guard down a bit. She starts kind of flirting and talking with the uh, guy who was driving the truck, and they reveal why he was under house arrest. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm the good kind of fellow. There is no such thing. Sure is. My sister's getting knocked around by her boyfriend, so I beat him up. Oh, well, I mean, that shouldn't With be a... a... Baseball bat, so... 
Uh, there's a little bit of a squabble between the two main leads because Sofia Vergara, for like God knows the how manyth time, she's tried to get away from Reese Witherspoon. Uh, they're squabbling over a gun. They knock at the door. It's the two detective dicks. They found them. And then they go running through the casino in the hotel. And th this is what was so weird to me. You have a guy in the middle of a crowded casino pointing a gun at two women, and nobody in the background seems to really care. Gotcha. Get back. Hazard, you don't want to do this. You've already killed one fellow officer today. Yeah. They say it only hurts the first time. It reminds me of that scene in The Bounty Hunter where Gerard Butler kidnaps Jennifer Aniston by putting her in the trunk of a car. And he does this in the parking lot of a sports game, like a baseball game, and nobody in this parking lot, there's lots of people walking by, nobody seems at all phased that this is happening. Uh, but anyway, the two main heroines get away because uh, Reese Witherspoon's new boyfriend shows up and beats the shit out of one of the detective dicks. Uh, Sofia Vergara tries to slunk away yet again, but Reese Witherspoon chases after her, and they get onto a bus, and there's a whole, like, five-minute, again, I can only assume ad-libbed scene, where Reese Witherspoon is talking about how she'll do anything to get on the bus, including sexual stuff, and... I'm just gonna bang everybody's brains out in there, and lots of dirty, dirty mm -hmm. sex stuff, like cracking the eggs and doing a pirate hunt in the general area of the Heine. Uh, That's supposed to be a key. I think this goes into the oh. booty. I mean, usually in a rated R movie, they'll throw in some cheap sexual innuendo here and there. This movie didn't even bother doing that. And then the joke is that, oh, it wasn't a tour bus for some boy band or some country band. No, it was a senior's tour bus. Uh, and then as they're riding on this bus to try and get away from the bad guys, uh, both sets of gangs, you know, the, the one Cholo gang and the uh, detective dicks, they're starting to catch up with them. They start shooting at the bus. The bus driver jumps off the bus. Then these two have to take over. All the while, they make yet another unfunny joke about Reese Witherspoon being short. I, I, I can't reach the pedals! I can't reach the pedals! They're able to stop them, and then once they come to a stop, uh, Reese Witherspoon gets punched out by Sofia Vergara. And then when she wakes up, it's revealed that, oh, the two other gang members that shot at the police officer and the husband, they were actually working for Sofia Vergara the whole time. And the movie, once again, just kind of barrels through all this like character detail in a quick throwaway line as if that makes up for the fact this movie has had little to no plot. My God, Cortez killed your brother and now you're gonna try and kill him. You don't have to do this, you know, we can put Cortez in jail. All the stuff they were talking about, like Sofia Vergara losing her brother to this crime lord, and she's been trying to get close with this crime lord so then she could eventually kill him one day as an, in an act of revenge. All this stuff would have been a much more interesting movie than what we actually got. Ultimately, Sofia Vergara goes on her way. She says that one way or another she will get revenge on this big crime lord guy, Cortez, who killed her brother years ago. Uh, and at first, Reese Witherspoon has to go back to the station with her tail between her legs, but the, the chief seems pretty uh, happy with her and says that she'll be bumped up as a police officer again, but she, she just don't feel right. So she decides to take it upon herself to go to this big party that's being held. Uh, it's a, a quinceanera for this crime lord's daughter. Uh, and so Sofia Vergara goes to this party so that way she can eventually kill this guy and uh, Reese Witherspoon shows up to try and stop it or at least help take this guy down now that they seem to have evidence that he's like guilty of something. Oh, and how she gets into the party. She Chica! Psst! Mamacita! <gasps> Why do you look like Jose Bieber? It's like in Zoolander 2 when they have the whole opening with Justin Bieber getting shot. It's like... Were people still making Justin Bieber jokes at that time? Was Justin Bieber still that relevant? I ask because I don't keep up with pop music because I think a lot of pop music nowadays sucks. But regardless, uh, ultimately it comes down to this Cortez guy. He ends up getting shot, uh, but Sofia Vergara doesn't get to shoot him. Reese Witherspoon accidentally shoots him. And then Sofia Vergara lashes out at her for getting the final kill that she wanted for years. Uh, and ultimately... Because Sofia Vergara was about ready to kill this guy, she has to go to prison, but only for three months. So again, that's another similarity to Get Hard. Just like how Get Hard ended with Will Ferrell still having to do some jail time, 
uh, Sofia Vergara has to do some jail time in this one, but you know, she gets out of jail, uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon picks her up, and they drive off into the sunset, and it seems like, oh, Reese Witherspoon and that guy are, you know, have been dating for quite a while, and uh, it's implied that they fucked. All right, all right, and technically he is not a fugitive. I helped him get off. Oh, I'm sure you did. That's disgusting. Somebody's getting Cooper. All right, cut it out. <laughs> okay, I might have coopered him a little. In conclusion, I don't think this is the worst comedy I've ever sat through. I mean, after watching shit like Under the Rainbow and, uh, you know, Norbit, A Thousand Words, and Meet the Spartans, and The Comebacks, and uh, Breaking Wind, and a couple of other really bad comedies, I can't say that this was the worst, but oh my god, just like Get Hard, I never want to watch this ever again. Everything about this movie was, like, from the beginning, the movie just looked so cheap. The entire time it looked like an SNL sketch that was dragged out to an hour and a half. I liked Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde. I thought she really did a good job in that one. Uh, and Sofia Vergara has made me laugh several times in things like Modern Family, but it's like, whoever decided to make those two a duo, like, they're... You know, there are just so many other better movies like this. I mean, if you want the best example of one of these, like, crime buddy movies where it's two people on the run and they end up forming a friendship or some kind of relationship, Midnight Run, that's a good example. There's also Me, Myself, and Irene, which I think I mentioned in my review of The Bounty Hunter, but that movie at least had a personality. That at least went full rated R. That had memorable stuff in it. This movie was just so middle of the road, forgettable. It, it feels like it lands smack dab amongst movies like Killers and The Bounty Hunter and stuff like that. It's just so forgettable and bland and it really does just remind me that in the mid 2010s there were such forgettable comedies coming out and this was one of them. God, I mean, to think this somehow had a higher rating than Supergirl on IMDb. At least Supergirl had some promise. I mean, Supergirl you know, that's based on a series of DC comics. It's like, you know, that was released at a time when superhero movies were at their height with the first two Superman movies as well as Superman 3, but we can we can pretend that that didn't happen. But this is just like, oh man. I believe this was released around the same time that, uh, I think, what, Avengers Age of Ultron came out. There's a reason that people would want to go out and see something like Age of Ultron. Who was lining up to go see Hot Pursuit? I think there were more people lining up to go see Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 more than this movie. It almost makes me kind of excited for next time where we're going to be talking about the stupid 2016 or 2017 uh, Nickelodeon family movie, Monster Trucks. Because at least that movie seems to be considered, you know, worst movie of the year material. It's probably going to be more interesting to talk about than this movie, which was just forgettable as hell. Who knows, maybe Monster Trucks will be so bad it's good, or so bad it'll be more interesting to talk about. Hopefully it, it washes the taste of this bad movie out of my mouth. Holy shit. But anyways guys, until then, I'm Adam Sykes of The Blockbuster Show, and we will see you guys in the next video. to get you to Dallas by 8 a.m. and I am going to complain.